Thank you very much. Thanks for, thanks for all coming. Uh, practice has been pretty good. Everybody's been keeping off the flags. Sorry about the dust. We're doing our best to keep it down. But obviously, the time of year, weather like it is, we've got a job. It's been brought to my attention. There have been people riding up through the area, the side of the pits here, and also riding the bikes across the pits. It's not the idea. You know you're not supposed to ride in the pits. You ride up through the area, which is marked off, to ride your bikes back up through, and then you stop there and you push your bikes the rest of the way. If I have any more reports of people riding in the pits, we shall shut the lane and stop everybody down here and have to push the bikes right the way to the top. Does anybody want that? I don't think so. So, you know, that's, it. that's the only grumble we got. So no riding in the pits. Have a good day, sport. See you later.
So we start the afternoon with the 250s and they are the first to get on that start line over there in the far corner. Remember, it's point scoring through three rides, so they've got to do it from the start this afternoon. Can't afford to drop points in these early rides. One to look for, I'm sure, will be number 80, Ashley Denham. He's one of the easy ones to spot. Simon Cooper, 67, you can see on that middle of the start but as they get underway they're going up that back straight three of them together making the early break Ashley Denham on the inside and that looks to me like Lee Pippen is on the outside as they break the that first turn Mark Rowe is back in 301 Mark Rowe is that comes down past me leading from Lee Pittman in second and Ashley Denham in third uh, 201 Lee Pittman going very very wide on that bottom turn I think Lee's hit problems as he pulls out on that bottom turn as the front runners do get themselves away from the rest of the field Mark Rowe coming around that top turn looking very comfortable indeed Ashley Dillon looks over his shoulder he knows he's got riders closing in on him he's not comfortable in that second place yet oh, number 95 is Steve Mando that's come up in the second third spot and pushing for that second perhaps, but Mark Rowe is really stamping his authority on this first race this afternoon. Charges into the top turn. Oh, we've seen him ride some fantastic 250 rides this year. This one might be yet another one of them. One more lap to go for Mark Rowe, looking very comfortable in front of Ashley Dunham in second, Steve Mander in third. Fourth place finisher at the moment is John Weeks in Bristol. Uh, he looks to be put under pressure as he did as we change for our first checkered flag this afternoon. Mark Rowe takes the first 250. Ashley Dillon for the set of the second. Steve Mander finishing in third. And John Weeks has perhaps got that fourth place back from number 87 for the first time this afternoon. And a result of a win for number 301 in terrific style. That's, of course, Mark Rowe. In second place, number 80, Ashley Denham. In third place, number 95 is Steve Mander. In fourth place, he just got it on the line, number 46 is John Weeks. In fifth place, number 87 is Mark Netherwood. And sixth place, number five, Adrian Kessel. Seventh place went to 38. Eighth place, 185. Ninth place, 414. Tenth place, 201. And the winning time, 125.12, 125.12. So race one, you should have had 301, 80, 95, 46, 87, 5, 38, 185, 414, 201, and a winning time, 125.12. All right, we're quickly underway with the pre-75. This is race two in your program. And great to see these guys out racing again. Six Jock Davison. Oh, Jock's always been a very strong competitor in the grass track world, so no surprise to see him leading this field. But I am a little bit surprised to see just how much he's leading the field by. Oh, uh, 223 is the rider in second, Mike Bowden. Mike going very, very wide on that top there, allowing Jock to get away even further. Kevin Akers is the rider in white in third. As I hold my breath there, thinking that he's going to stay in third, he certainly does as he go up that back straight. But this is a terrific start to the afternoon with Jock Davison. Last that flag for him as he comes past us this time. Oh, Mike Bowden is sitting there in that second place, but he certainly let the gap open up between him and Jock. Uh, Kevin Akers is the rider that's still battling for that third place and just about hanging on to it. Out of the bottom turn, it is a change of flags for our finishing marshal. The checkered flag for the second time this afternoon, and a terrific ride from Jock Davison to take his first win this afternoon. Mike Bowden coming across the line in second. One eight one Kevin Akers wins that battle for third place, just in front of number fourteen Trevor Kessler.
First of the pre-75s, a win for rider number 416, that of course is Jock Davison. In second place, number 223, Mike Bowden. In third place, number 181, Kevin Akers. In fourth place, number 14, Trevor Kessel. In fifth place, number 92, that's Mike Winter. And sixth place, number 7, Terry West. There was a 7th and 8th finisher if you want to squeeze them in, 116 and 921, 116 and 921. The winning time was 126.32, 126.32. So if you missed any of those, they were 416, 223, 181, 14, 92, 7, 116 and 921. Right, we go to the 350s for the first time. And they're already making their way to that start line. Mind you that these classes are, of course, all scoring points through to see who wins overall this afternoon. So already in the 250s, can anybody catch Mark Rowe in the pre-75s? Can anybody catch Jock Davison? Is there going to be somebody head and shoulders above in the 350s? At the moment, we're missing one rider. Get away with what looks to be a very big class of 350, and straight away we've got one rider setting the pace as they go into the first. Terrific star number 77, of course, is John Underwood. So John Underwood quickly setting the pace, number 65. Still there in second. Richard Knight is the rider in third. Those three really have got away from the rest of the field and John Underwood will not be able to see him in the Good scrap going on to second place, so keep your eyes on that one because number 72, Richard Knight, is closing on the time on John Sim. And as you go around that bottom turn, John again manages to keep his nose in front. Not able to close the gap on the early leader, John Underwood. And it is going to be a checkered flag for John, but it's going to be close to the second place. John Sims just doing it up to the line. Richard Knight finishing in third place. Number 18, With a very quick time, the winner of the first of the 350s, number 77, John Underwood. In second place, number 68, that's John Sims. Third place, number 72, Richard Knight. Fourth place, number 18, that's Andrew Parfoot. And fifth place, number 223, Mike Bowden. Sixth place finisher there, number 193. Seventh place, 94. Eighth place, 14. Ninth place, 44. Tenth place, 5. No other finishes, the winning time, 115.75, so a much quicker time for the 350s, 115.75. So we turn our attention to the 500 sidecars for the first time this afternoon. Four outfits I can see on the line, so we're obviously missing a few. We know that 21, Norman Haynes is a non-starter. Very evenly underway on the far side. Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe it is that have set the pace going into the first turn. They come round past me for the first time. It's Chris Salisbury in second. And outfit number six, Sean Chick and Guy Mitchell in third. But I thought for a moment Sean Chick was going to stay close to Chris Salisbury, but he lost it on that bottom turn. Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe obviously unaware of the battle that's going on behind them. They might be Making up the full contingent in fourth place is number four, Chris Hall and Alan Lee. So it is Norman Haynes that. Uh, Racing 
at the moment. Well, I just wonder, is Chris Salisbury starting to close on Mike Reed now as we go into the latter stages of this heat? Well, watch him go up the back straight. He certainly seems to close in the bends. He goes in much, much quicker into this top bend. Mike takes the board.
to take over the first 1,000cc sidecar race this afternoon and it's going to the crew of number 15, Ivor Matthews and Simon Wall. John Halsey and Jason Gunny take second. Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson finish in third. Good strap straight away. As in heat one, we see a win for rider number 15. That's Ivor Matthews and Simon Wall. In second place, number 13, John Halsey and Jason Gleddy. In third place, number five, Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson. And in fourth place, number 44, that's Jim Breen and Alf Breen. 129.09 was the winning time, 129.09. the second of the sidecars this afternoon it's Gary Jackson on the inside Andy Simons in the middle and John Hiscock on the outside goodness me they got himself up in the second, he's now back in third as Gary Jackson has come through, but out in front it is Andy Simons and Sean Yates. So they lead coming up past me for the second time, Gary Jackson in second into the bottom turn, outfit number 93, that is indeed Andy Simons and uh, Sean Yates. into the bend. Gary Jackson will be aware of that. He'll try and hold it tight and say close. He indeed is close as they go into the last lap. So where will the challenge come from? He knows exactly what Andy Simons has been doing on that bottom turn. He'll try and go for a right turn on the top there. Get the acceleration down the bend. Go wide on the entrance of the bend. You can see exactly what he's doing. He's looking for Andy Simons to go wide on the exit. Try and get through on the inside, but that's a terrific turn from Andy Simons. He takes the win. Brilliant sidecar driving from Andy Simons. Gary Jackson was keying him up nicely on that last turn, but he's done exactly what he needed to do. He's got the win. A win for number 93, that of course is Andy Simons and Sean Yates. In second place, number 23 is Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh. In third place, number 184, John Hiscock and Jason Gill. Fourth place, number 75, Ray Glasscock and John O'Glasscock. The winning time, 128.22, 128.22. So away we go then, with the heat three as they come up past me for the first time. Now well, into that first turn, that looks like Rick McCauley's made the best of the stars. Richard Thomas has been so Richard Thomas pulls out and now both of them are calling his scrap going down that back straight. Pick them up for you as they come round this time, but I think that is Rick that's out in front. It's 50, so it's in fact Ian McCauley that's out in front. Ian McCauley and James Wallacott leading from Rick McCauley and Marty Taylor. Now they've got to work for us. We get another retirement on that top turn. Another outfit pulling into the centre green, so we're down to three as they come round past us for the second time. Ian McCauley looks over his shoulder, he knows that Rick is in close contention. Certainly who it looks like. As we go into the last lap in this heat three, it is Ian McCauley and James Wallacott that lead, but Rick McCauley had a terrifically fast finishing straight there. He's gonna mount a last challenge as he goes down the back straight, and Rick closes right up on Ian and goes around the outside. A terrific back straight from Rick McCauley. Ian reacts as they come up towards the finishing line, and Ian says, you're not coming through that way, it's gonna be close on the line. But Ian McCauley, I would have suggested, has just got that one on the line. I'll leave it to the line judge. But terrific scrap from father and son. The passengers must have been wondering what was going on. What were they going to do next? Father and son, but it was eventually on the line a win for outfit number 50, Ian McCauley and James Wallacott. In second place, number 51, Rick McCauley and Martin Taylor. In third place, number 118, who we know is Wayne Westerway, 
but we think he was allocated that race as he'd been missed out of all the heats. I can't see where he appears in any of them. So he's been allocated to go in that race. So he should have 50, 51 and 118 and a winning time of 132.06, 132.06. Jeremy Davis and Dave Downs, Alan Pierce and Darren Winch. Number 52, Andy Robson and Paul Robson. And 62, Mick Turrell and Tony Baysby. a very good start from the centre of the game as Victor has got away. Alan Pierce is the outfit in second place and we've got two together in third and fourth but as they go down the back straight it is Victor and that Tony Baysby opening up a bit of a lead as they go into that bottom turn. Alan outfit number 30 Alan Pierce and Dave Wilts and immediately Jeremy Davis and Dave Downs pull out. So Alan Pierce now having a little bit of an easier time in that second spot, but he's not being able to close the gap at all. On uh, leader Tony Bates and driver Victor. Victor looks to be making the best of this one. Into the last lap he goes. Is he experimenting on what could be possibly quicker lines? Wondering whether he's got the gearing absolutely right. Throws it in hard in that top turn. The crews do get themselves a little bit spread out. I wonder if Big Toe wasn't making any changes because he looks to be losing a little bit in the middle of the bend. But he takes a very comfortable win first time out. Alan Pierce and Dave Winch finishing second. Andy Robson and Paul Robson in third. Now win for outfit number 62. That is, of course, the outfit of Mick Turrell and Tony Baysby. In second place, outfit number 30, Alan Pierce and Dave Wilts. In third place, number 52, Andy Robson and Paul Robson. And fourth place, number three, Mike Underhill and Chris May. Winning time was 128.88, 128.88. So race 10 then on the line as they get underway for this, the last of the first heats of the sidecars and three outfits together as they go up past me. Rob Burst on the outside, Sean Conway Baker in the middle, Dave Steer on the inside. Sean Conway Baker is to get the best of that first turn, but Rob Burst on the wide outside to be making up ground but Sean Conway Baker reacts he must have been on the better racing line as he went down that back straight because he pulled away from Rob Wilson he's gone very very wide on this bottom turn though so he must have been extremely quick into that bottom bend Rob Wilson has kept it a little bit tighter and Rob Wilson and Tony Miles take over the and Rob Chirac in third at the moment watching everywhere Sean Conway Baker goes now is he going to make the same mistake again he went in very very quick in this bottom turn Dave Steers obviously hoping that he will. He's much tighter this time, but Dave Steers even tighter. Oh, we know that he's the old master of the uh, tactics on the corners, Dave Steers and Rob Sherrack, but he's done it yet again. Holds it ridiculously tight on the inside, gets up the inside, and now he's already closing down on Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. Rob looking to go wide, but he's keeping the speed on, so Dave Steers knows that he's got a bit more of a challenge on this time. Closes right up again though, it's not by any means all over as they go into that top turn, into the last lap, and down the back straight they go. Rob Wilson and Tony Miles look to be slowly going down that back straight, so I wonder if they are conscious that they know it's Dave Steer behind them, they've got to keep it tight on this bottom turn. Dave again goes for a very tight line, it's going to be close on the line. Whoa! He tried the old tactic again and it looks like it would have worked, perhaps. I shouldn't make any judgment, should I? From where I'm sitting, I'll leave it to the line judge because it was very, very tight on the line. So when in race 10, very, very close on the line, there was only the tread of the tire to separate it, but it does indeed go to outfit number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In second place, but really only just, 
Number 17, that's Dave Steer and Rob Sharrax. In third place, number 71, is Sean Conway Baker and Dave Hogan. And in fourth place, number 40, is Graham Curtin and Alan Delve. 129.38 is the winning time, 129.38 for in that sidecar competition this afternoon. As we now turn our attention back to the 250s, and the question really is, can anybody stop? I'll tell you the line. No, it's not going to be back to the 250s. We're in good time. No, number seven, what, 77, Rob Vinton it is that goes into that bottom turn and he's out to confuse me this afternoon riding 177 isn't he but that is indeed Robinson that's got the lead well as I said that it looks as if he's going to be in there in third place and it is number 91 Rob Melksham that's got to the front so Rob Melksham takes over the lead 177 Robinson trying to stay with him these two very used to racing to each other They'll know exactly what each other's capable of, but Rob Melson looks to be making the better of it at the moment. He comes off the top there. Rob Vinton flying up that top turn, though. He goes very, very wide. Number 30 is Chris Dix in third place. Those three really away from the rest of the field, being led by Mark Howard Coles. And really all eyes on those front runners, because Rob Melson has certainly not had it. He knows that Rob Vinton has been there, but he now does look to as if he's there himself established with a bit of a gap between first and second. He takes the win, well Vincent has to sell the second, Rick Dix the third. And the first leg of the solo open, a win in very fine form from number 91, Rod Melksham. In second place, number 177, a good scrap though for Rob Vincent. In third place, number 30, that's Chris Dix. And in fourth place, number 27, that's Mark Howard Coles. In fifth place, number 46, John Weeks. Sixth place, number 189, Rob Snow. Seventh place, number 118, that's Gary Fandry. And sixth, eighth place, number 16. Winning time was 118.75. 118.75 is the solo open racing, all riding 500cc equipment. Away we go, somebody making the break on that start line. With no number at all on the inside. It doesn't seem like the way he comes around past me. That's like Justin Elkins. Indeed, Justin Elkins has come round off that first turn. Uh, Kevin Hamley in second place at the moment, but Justin Elkins is pulling away from the rest of the field, determined to make this one his. Great to see Justin back out on the glass track circuit. He does indeed power off that top turn. Looking very much in control. The rest of the field, we just watch him go away. Mike Lowe out in third place. And he's proving to be a busy man this afternoon. Riding uh, 375, 350s and riding in the open. But Justin Elkins really has made this one his. He looks to be enjoying his racing as well as he just picks it up nicely coming off that top turn. Goes down into the bottom turn. Still Kevin Hamley in second spot, but as I say that, you can see on the far side, Justin Elkins has hit problems. But he's slowing right up. You can see that he's anxiously looking over his shoulder. What on earth has gone wrong with that machine? I don't know, because it does look to be just about going. Well, Kevin Hamley closing right up, but Justin Elkins just crawls across the line. Well, Kevin must have thought that his uh, lucky stars had worked for him this afternoon. It's Justin Elkins slow, completely on the far side. Seven, but he certainly made us uh, flutter a little bit, didn't he? Number 97, Justin Elkins, of course, getting the race victory. Number 19, in second place, Kevin Hamley. In third place, number 223, that's Mike Bowden. In fourth place, number 194, that's Simon Fry. Fifth place, number 125, Mark Vacker. In sixth place, number 142, that's the addition to the program, Mike Gosling. And the winning time, 122.47. And the winning time, 122.47. So, we go away with race 13. This is heat four. Heat three, in fact, it should be. Heat three. Oh, 
ourselves after the first turn and he is indeed last year's winner John Jeffrey out in front he's got Mitch Cotton in second place to contend with Phil Ashcroft in third place at the moment but up the back straight it is last year's Devonshire Dumpling champion John Jeffrey is just gone away he goes around that top turn now he's got pressure from Mitch Cotton in second Mitch head down comes off that top turn Phil Ashcroft taking after those two but really, John Jeffries looks to be in terrific form. Mitch Gordon can only chase after him as he goes up that back straight. He really does look to be absolutely in most of his jump off that top end. He doesn't enjoy this circuit. Mitch Gordon's still there in second. Phil Ashcroft's still there in third. Well, as I say that, John Jeffries puts it down in the bottom turn. So Mitch Gordon says thank you very much and takes over. John desperately fighting with that machinery, trying to get himself back up on his feet. He knows he's got the rest of the field coming round. He does indeed get back up. But the race victory is going to go to Mitch Gordon as he comes across the line. Phil Ashcroft is in second. Now let's count the places as John Jeffrey tries to pick them off coming around that last turn. Colin Mills finishes in third, fourth, fifth. He's only going to get sixth place. So he's got to go well in his second two rides to make sure of getting a chance in that final. Very quick time in race 13. It was eventually a win for rider number 17, Mitch Gordon. In second place, number 83 is, of course, Phil Ashcroft. In third place, number 183, Colin Mills. In fourth place, number 28, Scott Hughes. In fifth place, number 49, Dave Heath. In sixth place, number four, John Jeffries. That's where he ended up. In seventh place, number 71, Barry Woodruff. Eighth place, number 35, Dave Barnaby. And ninth place, number 144. The winning time was 115.72. 115.72. Oh, John Jeffries we saw out earlier on. He's number 77. He won a very convincing form, his uh, 350 ride. Oh, away they go, and as we look across that far side, they've already broken. Oh, I wonder if they hit the leathers of John Jeffries. Mike Hill's up in second. Good scrap going on. Phil Ambrose, it is going around the outside, so Phil Ambrose. I told you to watch for him earlier on. He's got a terrific style, loves to ride the wide lines, and he really does most around the base. John Underwood away from the field, but it is Bill Ambrose that's in pursuit. Mike Hills in third place, Mark Dimmer in fourth, and Mick Dowling in fifth place. But that is a big, big gap now that I've got to ask Phil Ambrose to try and close, because John Underwood does look to be absolutely motoring. Off the top turn he comes, into the last lap. Phil Ambrose can in pursue, but that's asking a lot to close that gap. Mike Hill's going well in third place, Mark Zimmer in fourth, and Mick Dowling in fifth place. And those have really opened up quite a gap between them and the rest of the field. Remember today that we've got novices and experts mixing together. John Underwood takes the victory though. Phil Ambrose has to settle for second. Mike Hill is going to hang on to third place. It's been confirmed by our timekeeper, the quickest we've seen so far, a win in race 14 for number 77, John Underwood. In second place, number 50, Phil Ambrose. In third place, number 178, Mike Hills. In fourth place, number 33, 33 is Mark Dimmer. Fifth place, number 282, Mike Dowling. Sixth place, number 44, Adrian Rowe. Seventh place, number 6, Matthew Huddy. And 8th place, number 37. 9th place, number 12. 10th place, number 38. And the winning time, I said it was quick, 111.41. 111.41, that winning time. 77, 50, 178, 33, 282, 44, 6, 37, 12, and 38. 111.44. No, it's not. 111.41 would be better. That's what I gave you the first time, wasn't it? Right, over the page we go. 500cc sidecars for the second time this afternoon. What happened the first time they came out? Well, we saw wins for Mike Reed and Ricky Neal. 
Now, Ricky Neal goes in this one. And I can't for the moment see where Mike Reed goes, so he might go in this one as well, but he probably doesn't. He probably goes in the next one. Right. Ricky Neal it is. This takes the lead as it come off the start line. He's in that first turn. Chris Hall is in second. Now, what can Steve Kensington do this time? That was a very disappointing ride in his first heat. Steve Kensington, who is more used to seeing at the front of the field is battling away in third place at the moment while he battles for that place to get through the second if he can Chris Hall does everything he can to hold him off but it means that all the time Ricky Neal will be getting away from Kevin Jones well, still the battle rages for that second Steve Kensington can't quite get past Chris Hall Chris Hall riding some brilliant lines in both bends not allowing Steve Kensington the opportunity to come round. Another good ride from Ricky Neal. He's certainly the points on. There will be a final for the 500cc sidecars. So it's all about getting good points in these qualifying heats to get yourself a chance in that final. And the dual battle rages for that second place. Steve Kensington looking for a tight line that time around the bottom bend. He's been going the long way round. The changes lines that come through on the inside. It's going to be a question of Chris Hall hanging on for second place. He certainly does. So, Ricky Neal and Kevin Jones get the win. And the first on the second rides for the 500 sidecars, a win for outfit number 11. That makes it two out of two for Ricky Neal and Kevin Jones. Outfit number 11, of course, that was. In second place, number four, Chris Hall and Alan Lee. In third place, number two, Steve Kensington and Andy Robertson. In fourth place, number 24, that's Tim Phillips. The winning time, 122.87, 122.87. it is we get underway with the 500 side cars will remain and as they go up the back straight that looks to me like Mike Reed has made another very good start we're sorting out for you as they come round from the first time that is indeed Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe Chris Salisbury is in there in second Sean Chick and Guy Mitchell in third now we saw this battle earlier on where Sean Chick was trying to get round uh, Chris Salisbury and while that battle was going on of course it allowed Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe to get away. So I wonder if that's going to be the same thing again. Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe have had a win the first time out. They'll be looking to emulate exactly what Ricky Neal has done. Two rides and two wins. That was exactly how we saw it. And indeed, these three, as they are at the moment, is how we saw that very first race of 500 sidecars. Chris Salisbury. passing movement made I'm sure it's going to be going up that back straight and into that top turn that's where Sean Chick looks to be a little bit quicker but Chris Salisbury reacts to it this time and indeed we are going to see the check flag as they come out that top turn it's going to be two rides two wins for outfit number 57 Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe number 57 Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe in second place, number 418, Chris Salisbury and Gary Hughes. In third place, number 6, Sean Chick and Guy Mitchell. In fourth place, number 143, Keith Richards and Thomas Baines. The winning time, 120.37, 120.37. We now turn our attention to the 250s as I tried to a little bit earlier on and well the question I was going to say was is there anybody that can stop Mark Rowe? Well one man that will certainly give it a try is the young director Kevin McKee going off that start line and into the first turn and Mark in fact is back in third place so Lee Pippen has had a much better start this time. Now what can Mark do is he's gone very very wide on that bottom turn is the battle for second place going to give Ashley Denham a chance to get away a little bit? Now this is certainly good for Ashley Denham if Lee Pittman can stay there in second and give Mark Rowe well a bit of a hard time. Because Ashley Denham is getting away. Oh, Lee Pittman is still there in second. Steve Mander is now starting to close up. He's in fourth place and he can perhaps see opportunities. 
because Mark Rowe is not closing down on second place as perhaps I'd have expected him to. He seems to be going very wide on the bend. Well, as they close right up again on this top turn, Ashley Denham goes into the last lap leading, and Steve Mandra has certainly got really close to Mark Rowe. He'll be looking to challenge again. If Mark goes wide on that bottom turn, then I'm sure that Steve Mandra will come through, and indeed he does go up into third place. So this will certainly change things in the points of course. Remember, it's point scoring overall. Ashley Denham takes the checker flag, and that's a good win for Ashley. Second time out. Lee Pittman in second. Lee Mander in third, and Mark Rowe in fourth. The win for rider number 80. That is, of course, the very quick Ashley Denham in second place. Good ride from 201, Lee Pittman. In third place, number 95, Steve Mander. In fourth place, number 301, Mark Rowe. Fifth place, number 46, that's John Weeks. And sixth place, number 87, Mark Netherwood. Seventh place was number five. Eighth place, 185. Ninth place, 414. And the winning time, 119.88. 119.88. I don't think we'll be very happy with that start, but <laughs> they've joined the rest of the field anyway once it's underway. And one rider that makes no mistake at all is the rider that won the first race, and of course is 416 Jock Davidson. So Jock quickly gets out in front as Mike Burden is the rider in second. That's a busy man this afternoon, but he's certainly riding well in this pre-75 class, holding second place at the moment. But the question mark most definitely is, can anybody do anything about Jock Davidson? Right, it's a question really why Jock uh, riding like this isn't out in the open class as well, because I think he would have uh, perhaps put up a good performance as well in the open, but decided to concentrate on the pre-75, and as he goes up the back straight, who can blame him in a nice leisurely form this afternoon in this beautiful weather? So down past the evening jump, Jock Davidson for the second time this afternoon, leading the rest of the field. Mike Bowden in second. That's uh, Mike Winter in third place at the moment. And uh, that's certainly changed from the early race. As it was in fact Kevin Akers that uh, got that third. Well, we've lost one rider on the circuit here, so... Quickly they get the bike off the track, as indeed Jock Davidson goes across the line to take his second win from just two rides. Uh, second ride, second win for rider number 416, that's Jock Davidson. In second place, number 223, Mike Bowden. In third place, number 92, Mike Winter. In fourth place, number 14, that's Trevor Kessel. And fifth place, number 181. That indeed is where Kevin Akers was this time. In sixth place, number seven, Terry West. There is a seventh place finisher, number 921, if you can squeeze that in somewhere. The winning time was 125.88, 125.88. One or two riders not in line. I don't think the riders are certainly happy with that one. Clark had, of course, in fact, putting a red flag up. So the riders will just show the red flag as they come around that first turn. And um, then August the 15th, Bridgewater Club are running. On the 21st and 22nd, there's a two-day meeting being put on by the Cornwall Solo Grass Track Club. That's down near Truro. And not forgetting on the 29th, Somerton Club are running in John Underwood setting the pace once again. Richard Knight, the rider that looked to be challenging for that second spot last time, has now got second place. John Sims in third at the moment, but it is John Underwood. 
So away they go then as they come up past me for the first time. Rob Wilson just in the lead as they went past me, but it's close in that first turn as they see it's got up the inside. Ian McCauley staying there with him as well, tried to go through the same gap as Dave Steer got through, but it's Dave Steer that's there, Rob Wilson in second at the moment, into the bottom turn, Ian McCauley not out of contention, he's in third at the moment. But Dave Steer and Rob Sharax with the lead as they go past me, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles into second place. Now the gaps are starting to open, so Dave Steer obviously has got the gearing sorted, got it right, comes up past me. This is a good ride from Dave, he had a second place behind Rob Wilson first time out. And he is now looking for a win in his own right. Down the back straight he goes and that's quite some gap he's opened up between him and Rob Wilson. So Rob Wilson I'm sure will be looking to change something when he goes in next time. One more lap to go, and this looks how it, as if it's going to stay like this as they go into that top turn. What a terrific ride from Dave Steer and Rob Sharax. We're so used to seeing them battle their way through, work their way through from those very tight inside lines, but this is a terrific ride. They've taken a win in their own right. Rob Wilson gets second place. Third place to Ian McCauley. Seventeen. I'm sure you've all got that one in already. Of course, it is Dave Steer and Rob Sherrax. In second place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In third place, number 50, Ian McCauley, James Wallacott. In fourth place, number 52, that's Andy Robson and Paul Robson. 126.59, 126.59. We look now to heat three in this, the second leg. Race 22 in your program, and uh, interesting perhaps. You look at the competitors going in this one. Number 13, John Halsey, he had a second first time out. Gary Jackson, number 23, he had a second also. So we've got no heat winners from those first leg rides going in this one. But two riders that both had seconds could both consolidate points in this one with a race win. They get underway and it is those two outfits that get away. John Halsey just with the lead, but Gary Jackson says, I want it back. He goes through on the inside. And John Halsey knows cut back underneath as Gary Jackson went a bit wide. Now who's going to get the wheels in line first and get the speed down the back straight? They're both together as they go into this bottom turn. Oh, there's also a lot of memories, I'm sure, flooding back between all of you around the crowd that remember what has happened between these two outfits over the years. Rob, John Halsey and Joyce McClenny leading from Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh and Gary anxiously looking down at machinery as they go down that back straight. I don't know whether that's a back wheel puncher or there's something else wrong with an outfit that John Halsey won't mind at all as he gets away and comes up past me for the second time. Not forgetting in second place, we've got Jim and Alfred. Gary Jackson has now got that outfit going again and flies into that top turn. Oh, down the back straight they go, and it really is a shame that Gary had lost the momentum in that uh, first heat, or first lap, I should say, of this heat. Because I'm sure that would have been a battle royal between these two, and John Horsey now has got the lead, but goes down the back straight. second place of winning this one that puts him right back in the top point scoring chance oh john halsey and jason glenny take it and gary jackson has come through the second that's terrific riding from gary jackson and carl Pugh. not sure what the problem was with their outfit earlier on but they recovered well and fought their way back they get second place so that's two seconds to gary jackson keeps him right in there with a shell result as it was a win as they come across the line for number 13 John Halsey and Jason Glenny. In second place number 23 Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh. In third place number 44 Jim and Alfreen. And in fourth place number 55 and 55 she is Jack and Paul Ucklow. The winning time 128.31. 128.31 that's the winning time. Three of the leg one winners. They, of course, were Ivor Matthews, Rob Wilson, and Ian McCauley. The remaining two, Mike Turrell and Andy Simons, they go in race 23.
Well, I've been watching quite a few heats now. I don't think that I've been able to ascertain that there's any advantage anywhere on that start line. Uh, obviously, the riders uh, sorting themselves out as they get to the start. Andy Simmons pushing the start and as they get underway Andy Simon certainly had a very very good start then and he's indeed kept that start going Tony Baysby had uh, all sorts of problems as they go into that first turn he connects with the outfit of Alan Pierce I think and Tony Baysby has uh, lost grip coming out of that bend now I'm looking to see whether there is a red flag yes indeed there is a red flag Eighteen, thirty, sixty, seventy-one, and one one eight. Now, sixty. Richard Thomas has, knows he's got to go well in this one. He didn't score in his first ride. He went out with mechanical problems, so uh, he's only got two rides to try and get points enough to get in to the A final. With three legs only, that's a very, very tough order. So uh, I'm sure Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley know exactly what they've got to do. They've got Sean Conway Baker to contend with as they get underway. Not forgetting Rick McCauley as well, he's in there. And it is those two that from Cornwall that get away. Sean Conway Baker has just got the edge in front as he goes into that first turn. Oh, Richard Thomas is looked to go wide, but Ian McCauley has come through on the inside. Rick, I should say, has come through on the inside and Rick has got right to the front. Sean Conway Baker tries to come back at him in that bottom turn. And Richard Thomas is watching what's going on in front of him and next to on the inside. Oh, terrific sidecar racing as Richard Thomas now gets himself with a nose in front going into that top turn. John Conway Baker tries to come back underneath and find a way down that back straight. And as those two get away, Rick McCauley has lost out a little bit on those front two. But Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley have got to the position they exactly want to be in. They've got to the front. Sean Conway Baker has now got to do the chasing. Rick McCauley is also in there chasing as well as they go up the back straight. straight we go as Richard Thomas is now starting to close on one of our tail enders that's number 18 Justin Westaway so he must be wondering why he's starting to pick up a bit of dust but he's still in there battling away as he goes down the back straight it will be the checkered flag for him this time as he comes round and this is exactly what Richard Thomas needed not scoring at all in his first leg and Justin Westaway goes wide to let him through. Richard Thomas takes the checkered flag. Sean Conway Baker takes second and Rick McCauley takes third. So the official result of race 24, I remind you. Race 24, heat five, that was, that was just... So, race 24 then, the heat five we've just seen on the circuit, a win for outfit number 60, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. In second place, number 71, that's Sean Conway Baker and Dave Hogan. In third place, number 51, that of course was the outfit of Rick McCauley and Martin Taylor. And in fourth place, number 18, Justin Westaway and passenger Mark Courtney. The winning time is 128.13, 128.13 as we've now got race 23 out on the circuit and this is the scrap between 
Those two that had heat wins in their first leg ride. Anthony Simons and Sean Yates, Victor and Tony Basley as they go down the back straight in those two that are one and two. Vic Underhill in third place at the moment, but Andy Simons looking to make it two out of two as he goes very, very wide on that bottom turn. Oh, Mick Torres recognised that. He held a much tighter line and he certainly got himself in contention to try and first place as he goes down the back straight now looking to hold it quick and tight as he goes down to this bottom corner now surely andy simons won't make the same mistake again he holds it much much tighter this time so he's corrected things mick Torrell and tony basby pleased i'm sure to be back out there As we see the last that flag go for Andy Simons and Sean Yates. Mick Torrell and Tony Baysby still there in second. Battle going on for this third place now as Mick Underhill has gone a little bit wide. He's allowed Alan Pierce through on the inside. But the most important thing to come out of this team of the second leg for the sidecars is going to be that Andy Simons and Sean Yates have kept the pressure on. Two rides and two wins. Heat 4 it was, race 23 in your programme, a win for outfit number 93. That of course is that of Andy Simons and Sean Yates, two rides and two wins. In second place, number 62 is Mick Torrell and Tony Baysby. In third place, number 30, Alan Pearce and Darren Wills. In fourth place, number 3, Mick Underhill and Chris May. The winning time, 127.75, 127.75. We've consulted with the officials of the club and they are going to water extensively when you see that interval at the bottom of the page. So we are going to put a lot of water down and hope that it will soak in and make the conditions a lot better. But I'm sure you'll all appreciate that if you've been involved in grass track many years, or even if you haven't, perhaps you can appreciate that if they put water down now, it could make it very dangerous for the riders. The riders are saying that the visibility is good for them, that the past is the wind that's taking it up this way. So we are sticking with these heats of solo races, and there will be quite a long interval while we allow the water to soak in after these four heats of the open. And at the moment, race 25, we get underway, and it's going to be a bit of 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 a They come down past me, in the last lap they go. The last rock, still there with the lead, Mike Dowling still second. Well, in fact, leading the rest of the field is number 49, Dave Heath. And he's a long way back from those front two. And they now come down that past me to take the checkered flag. Phil Ashcroft takes the win, Mike Dowling takes second. So race 25 then, heat one of the second leg for the solo. A win for number 83, his first this afternoon, that's Phil Ashcroft. In second place, number 282 is Mike Dowling. In third place, number 49, that's Dave Heath. In fourth place, number 71, Barry Woodruff. In fifth place, number 16, Ricky Sobey. In sixth place, number 194. Seventh place, 125. Eighth place, number 12. Ninth place, 161, and the winning time, 117.16, 117.16.
go into that first turn, I can see that we've got a red flag. So, whatever was the problem with the start, obviously one of our riders being left. And now what I should point out to you is that we've been advised by the pits that John Underwood, who goes in this one, he's actually blown his 500 up. Look at those front runners, there's Justin Elkin has got away, Bill Ambrose is up there as well, John Jeffries is in there as well in third place, around the bottom turn they come. Oh, that was building up to be a cracking heat, and as you can see, we've got a fallen rider on the top of the bend. Just in fact, as I was talking about it, I think that might even have been... No, I thought for a moment it was... John Underwood, but it's number 28, that's Scott Hughes, so. second restart of race 26, he's still reminded of the moment. And as they come round off that first turn, last year's winner, John Jeffrey, determined once again to get his name back on that trophy. He leads as he goes into the bottom turn. Bill Ambrose is right there with him. And as they go up that back straight, I've got to ask where Justin Elkins is. Well, Justin Elkins is very slow. He's coming round the start turn. What happened to Justin Elkins from the start? Well, John Jeffrey gets away. Well, remember that John Underwood in third place is actually on a 350 machine. He's desperately trying to stay with them, and there's problems for Justin Elkins. So really, the point situation is going to go absolute haywire, because I was going to say that, remember, John Jeffrey was determined to get a win here, because he only had a sixth place in his first ride. He knew he had to score well, and indeed, he's going like a train at the moment. As he goes round that bottom turn, Phil Ambrose has had no answer to him at all. He can only just follow him round and pick up points for second place. John Jeffrey's now starting to pick up the third end as he comes round off that top turn. There goes the checkered flag. He's got what he wanted out of his second ride. Heat two of the uh, second leg for the solo open. A win for rider number four, last year's winner, John Jeffries. In second place, number 50, Phil Ambrose. In third place, number 77, John Underwood. In third place, fourth place, I should say, number 46, John Weeks. Fifth place, number 44, Adrian Rowe. Sixth place, number 118. And seventh place, number 171. The winning time was 112.93, 112.93. If you missed any of those, there were four, 50, 77, 46, 44, 118, and 171, 112.93. And uh, obviously our apologies from the organizers to say that uh, we can't account for this brilliant sunshine. Shouldn't knock it really, should we? People pay a fortune to go to Spain to sit in this all day long. place and I think that was uh, number 91 who is Rod Melksham in third place and it might have been correct uh, the uh, win he did indeed so Rod is back in third place so the points in the open are really going to be upset in this one because Rob had a win first time out he's back in third place Mitch Gordon of course had a win his first time out. He's now going for his second win as he comes round off that top turn. 
in towards me and into the last lap. He looks over his shoulder. He knows his things are going come from. Mike Hills looks over his shoulder as well. He's sitting in second place. Rob Melksham's still there in third. Well, up the back straight they go, and as you can see, they let the dust clear and come round off that top turn. It is going to be a checkered flag. It's going to be another win for Mitch Cotton. Mike Hill takes second. Rob Melksham takes third. And I think that's Colin Mills, number 183, that takes fourth place. Let's give you the official result. It was second ride out for Mitch Gordon and his second win this afternoon. Number 17 is the number you put in first place. In second spot is number 178, Mike Hills. In third, we go with number 91, Rob Melksham. In fourth place, number 183, that's Colin Mills. Fifth place, number 19, 19 is Kevin Hamley. Sixth place, number 27. Seventh place, number 189. 8th place, number 37, ninth place, 38, and the winning time, 115.40, 115.40, that winning time, 17, 178, 91, 183, 19, 27, 189, 37 and 38 is the numbers you should have all had, and to add to the predicament that I was saying that they really have got a problem deciding what is safe, who wants to ride, who doesn't want to ride, is it good for the public? I can tell you that what the 250s have asked is they've heard me mention that there's going to be water put on the circuit. They've asked, can they go out before the interval? Can they go out before the watering is done? Now, I think possibly why I'm saying that to you is I'm letting you know that that's the emphasis coming from the riders, that they feel the racing conditions are absolutely superb at the moment out there on the circuit. If you've never raced one of these machines before, it might be difficult to appreciate. But the riders like to know that they've got superb grip and it's all a matter of tyre compounds relating to the surface. The surface is absolutely rock hard, the tyre compounds are working well and they feel very safe out there at the moment. And that's been emphasized by the two systems that they want to come out before the evening. Well, of course, agreed, if that's what the riders want to do, obviously we want to act in the interest of uh, safety as a paramount interest of everybody. So at the moment, let's uh, just enjoy the last of the open heats because we're already into lap three of heat four, race 28. I'm really determined to make this one here. As you can see coming off that top bend, right at number nine is Paul Smith. So, uh, I thought it was Paul as he was going round. I can't remember scoring very well in his first ride. And in fact, I don't think he scored at all in his first ride. So determined to get maximum points this time as Paul Smith comes off that top end towards the checkered flag. E and D takes the win, Robinson gets second, Chris Nix crosses the line in third. And Mike Bowden finishing in fourth place. In the heat four in your program. Oh, this is the second leg of the solos and a win for rider number nine, Paul Smith question really is where was he in that first leg right second 177 and of course is rob vincent third place number 30 that's uh, chris dix fourth place number 223 mike bowden in fifth place number 142 that's your additional rider of the program mike gosling and uh, sixth place number six matthew huddy Seventh place, 144. Eighth place, 67. And the winning time, 119.25. 119.25. A one last year by Lee Pittman, in fact. So, uh, obviously disappointed that he's not in there with a fight. So, if I can remind you that the... Uh, so it's 12 points going for a win, 10 points for a second. What's going to happen in this, the last of the 250s this afternoon as they go into that first turn? Remember, Ashley Denham is leading this competition after two rides. He's on 22 points overall. He, in fact, leads this last seed. He comes down past me. Well, on the inside is Mark Rowe up in second place. The Mander in third place at the moment. And it's Mark Rowe that goes after Ashley Denham. Well, he's gone very, very wide, and Steve Mander is now starting to attack again. So, as Steve Mander gets in the contention for second place, it could give the freedom to Ashley Denham that he wanted. Uh, he really is riding superbly on this 250, Ashley Denham. 
He came out of the junior racing into adult racing at the back end of last season and this is his first full season on 250 racing and he's competing with some very very capable national riders here this afternoon and he is doing superbly well as he leads coming off that top turn Mark Rose still there in second place Steve Mander still there in third Lee Pittman in fourth place at the moment Lee of course was last year's 250 dumping winner and those four staying like that as they go into the bottom turn up the back straight they go this was the last lap so the checker flag is beckoning for Ashley Denham as he comes round and a win here will mean it win it overall this afternoon. It is going to be a win for Ashley Denham. He takes it. Mark Rowe in second. Dean Mander in third. And if my points calculations work out correctly, I think that's how it will finish overall. But one thing is for certain, that is a win in the 250 for Ashley Denham. <laughs> Well, indeed, show you congratulations to Ashley as he comes round because, uh, and indeed the rest of the riders as they all come round. John Weeks decided to pull the wheelie for us as he comes by. That's some tremendous riding. Let's give you then the official result for race 31. A win, of course, for out rider number 80. That's Ashley Denham. In second place, number 301. That's Mark Rowe. In third place, number 95, Steve Mander. In fourth place, number 201, Lee Pittman. In fifth place, number 46, John Weeks. In sixth place, number 87. 87 is Mark Netherwood. Seventh place is number five, Adrian Kessel. Eighth place, number 38, Graham Tizard. In ninth place, number 414, Nigel Hubbard. And tenth place, number 185, John Snow. The winning time, 121.20, 121.20, that's the winning time. That, of course, was the result for race 31. with this the first race after the interval and it's with the 500 sidecars as they get underway going up that back straight oh, Chris Salisbury I mentioned would be sure of a place in the final the good first of the second year and at the moment it's Keith Richards has got the lead Chris Salisbury trying to go around the outside of him as he gets to the front now going to that bottom turn so Keith Richards with the early lead loses it on that bottom turn you can see quite a few of the back wheels dropping out in the middle of the bend, so uh, the conditions have changed quite a lot. But, uh, Chris Norsley comes around. Now Steve Kensington trying to close the gap on second place as well. Steve Kensington in third at the moment. And I apologise if earlier on I was saying that this wasn't the Steve Kensington we're used to seeing. This is his, in actual fact his first race back after suffering uh, an injury work which meant that his index finger wasn't back to move. So this is really to see Steve racing once again. He said that he is finding it difficult with maintaining the amount of grip that he's used to having and I'm sure if you imagine doing away with your index finger it does make an incredible difference to your grip. But he got himself up in second place so obviously starting to enjoy it once again. Chris's first win this afternoon. Wonder what sort of omen that'll be for the final. Official result for the first race after the interval. A win for outfit number 418. That's Chris Salisbury and Gary Hughes. In second place, number two, Steve Kenjiton and Andy Robertson. In third place, number 143, that's Keith Richards and Thomas Baines. The winning time, 126.10, 126.10. Well, it's going to be a difficult one to answer because if you can't hear me, I guess I can hear you. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Phil? No way. Can you hear me? It's going. Yes, 
right, away we go. We've got race 30 out on the circuit. Ricky Neal is up there as well, Sean Chick, really the rider that has got to score well in this one. It's going to be tight for Sean to get into the final, he's got the two riders in front of him that haven't been beaten this afternoon. circuit so problems for Chris as he slows but this was a tough heat for Sean Chick and Guy Mitchell as they've come out in this their last ride one man we know that we'll see in the final is Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe this will be the completion of three rides and three wins Ricky Neal the only other rider near them he's in second place he's had two wins so far in the armor for Ricky Neal. And he comes towards the checker flag this time. It's going to be three rises, three wins for Mike Reed. Ricky Neal hangs on to second. Sean Chick finishing in third. The official result of heat two, the last leg of the sidecars, 500cc that is, a win for number 57, Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe. In second, number 11, Ricky Neal and passenger Kevin Jones and in third number six Sean Chick and Guy Mitchell 123.03 was the winning time 123.03 that completes the 500 sidecars we've already had the 250s that's race 31 so we now go on to the pre 75 that's at race 32 and uh, the position with the pre 75s at the moment is that Jock Davison has had two rides and two wins. He's on maximum 24 points. Mike Bowden, number 223, he's had two rides and two seconds. So can anybody stop Jock Davison? Would it be the sole responsibility of Mike Bowden? Well, we'll see as they come round because Jock has made another good start. Around off that first turn, looks over his shoulder. Mike Bowden is certainly there in second place, but he's perhaps left quite a gap between him and Jock Davison. Well, I can see that a lot of these riders are taking it very, very tentatively around the bend, so the watering obviously has changed the racing condition. It really was so rock hard for them before the interval that they were getting maximum grip and maximum drive. Well, Kevin Akers in third place as uh, Indeed, he was in his first ride. But the pre-75 looks to be going all the way of Jock Davison. This is another terrific ride from Jock as he comes around off that top turn. One more lap to go as he looks over his shoulder. Mike Bowden still holding that second place, and that's in fact where he's been through all three of these heats. And as he goes into the last turn, Jock Davison making the pre-75, 1991, 1999, Kevin Dublin is, he takes the checkered flag. Mike Bowden finishing in second place, and number 181, Kevin Akers finishing in third. Right, the official result of race 32, a win for rider number 414, and of course is Jock Davison. I'll give him his right number. He's 416, of course. 416. And in second, 223, Mike Bowden. In third place, that's number 181, Kevin Akers. In fourth place was Bike 67. Now, we were told that that was uh, 32, but of course there's no 32 in this class, so we'll have to try and sort one out for you exactly who that was. In fifth place was number 14, that's Trevor Kessel. Now the winning time was 126.50, 126.50, so 416, 223, 181, 67 and 14, but we know 67 was on somebody else's bike, or the rider was on somebody else's bike. Could well be Mike Winter perhaps, number 92, but we'll get that confirmed by the pits. So we move 
now to race 33, the 350 class, which really has been dominated by John Underwood. He's riding his 350 in the open as well, but at the moment, The rider in second is going to try and stay with him. John Sims now finding his way through to get up into third. It really has been a scrap between these three. But John Underwood has looked absolutely superb on that 350. He really does look to be enjoying it this afternoon. Rose it in very early and very hard. Comes down past the makes a little power on. Gets the wheels in line very quickly. Oh, we've lost the rider on this bottom turn, so the yellow flags will be going up. And as we can see that the rider and machine as we lose another rider on that bottom turn as well. is the rider in second, John Sims the rider in third. So up the back straight they go, and uh, John Underwood. Look at him, tremendous for the start of him. Remember, he's already had two wins in this class. He's on a very, very quick three fifty. Richard Knight still there in second. John Sims, who's been scoring well this afternoon, is sitting there in third place. But really the 350 this afternoon, all about John Underwood. Could anybody stop him? The answer is absolutely not. John Underwood comes over the line. He takes the 350. Richard Knight in second place. John Sims in third. From John Underwood. He clinches a 350 with three very convincing rides. The official result of race 33 to confirm that overall win for him was a win for number 77, John Underwood. In second place, number 72, Richard Knight. In third place, number 68, John Sims. In fourth place, number 18, that's Andrew Parfitt. In fifth place, number 94, Kevin Francis. Sixth place, number 223, Mike Bowden. Seventh place, number 193, 8th place 44 and 9th place 14. The winning time 117 exactly. 117 exactly the winning time. quickly get underway and we've got a lot of the top point scorers in this one because Rob Wilson has got himself to the front. Victor is right in there as well. Anthony Simons is in there in third place. So Rob Wilson is Twelve points scored from two rides. Mick Tull, number 62, is on 12 points as well. Andy Simons, number 19, is on... Number 93, I should say, is on 14 points. competition as we go down the back straight Rob Wilson knows that a win here should get him through into the final he comes around off that bottom turn comes up past us as you can see Mick Terrell staying there in second place Andy Simon's still there in third those three away from our fourth place rider from the third race victory last year Wilson looking in very determined form, throws it in hard into that bottom bend, tries to get the drive back on but he's drifted out wide, keeps the speed on though, into the last lap he goes and Mick Toll is a lot closer to him this time. So Mick Toll has perhaps watched what's been going on in that bottom turn, Wilson very quick down the back straight but he goes very wide on the exit of the bend, Mick Toll I'm sure is conscious of that and as he goes into this bottom turn I'm sure we're going to see a challenge from him and Rob Wilson again has gone wide. Mick Tower has gone through on the inside and Mick Tower has got it. 
Oh, he could see what was going to happen there. Nick Toll knew exactly what he was going to do. Result of race 34, the first of the third leg rise for the sidecars. The win for outfit number 62. That, of course, is Mick Toll and Tony Baysby. In second place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In third place, number 93, that is Andy Simons and Sean Yates. And in fourth place, number 40, that's Graham Curtin and Alan Dell. The winning time, 130.63, 130.63, 62, 24, 93, and 40. Underway with race 35, and Gary Jackson has made a terrific start. Well, he goes into that first turn, and that looks like Rick McCauley is in there. It's Neil McCauley, I should say, with Tony Memister on the back, perhaps. We'll check that as they come round. But Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh knew what they had to do. They've gone out for the victory, and indeed, they've got themselves to the front. Well, Ian McCauley it is with Tony Memister in the chair. They're up in second place. Well, this afternoon, and the few change of passengers. Remember, during the afternoon, he started with his original passenger. He didn't feel so well. So Rick went out in his second ride, and they spun it round in that bottom turn, as I'm saying that. Oh, that's why you really need an experienced passenger, because it's moments like that that the passenger can make all the difference. But Tony, being as serious as he was, quickly moved, allowed Ian to get in under control. While all that's going on, we've got Gary Jackson, I'm sure, testing his way around that bottom turn because he saw how Rob Wilson went wide. They all seem to have got this top corner stuff, but it's the bottom men that is giving them problems. Now, you watch Carl Pugh work hard. He doesn't even sit up down the back straight. He stays down really, really low, trying to give that centre gravity as low as he possibly can. Gary's working that back wheel, takes the whip, and then that was a bit of an experiment on that bottom turn to see what the quickest line was around that bottom bend. And a win for Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh. Outfit number 23 it is that goes in first spot. In second place, number 44, that's Jim Preen and Alf Preen. In third place, number three, Mike Underhill and Chris May. In fourth place, number 118, Wayne Westaway. In fifth place, number 15, Ian McCauley and Tony Bannister. The winning time, 127.94, 127.94. race 36 it's going to be tough to get into the final for the sidecars there's been a lot of competitors they've all had three rides each you've got to score consistently well to make sure you get in that a final at the moment sean conway baker has missed the start he's got a lot of work to do to try and come through but ivor matthews has done it right Charlie, you can see we've lost sean conway baker's passenger sean wants to carry on by himself but uh, I'm sure he's not going to be allowed to. Oh, I'm sure Ivor Matthews will be very disappointed that that one's been stopped. He certainly was looking to have the race won.
get underway. Ivan Matthews quickly puts his arm in the air because there was a red flag being raised. They uh, were wanting to move the water tanker and tractor away from that bottom turn. If anybody had overrun the bend, then there uh, could have been all sorts of problems. So whilst they were doing that, they uh, kept the red flag out. A lot of the outfits didn't see it, obviously. they get underway, Ivor has once again made the start, he's got Sean Conway Baker with him this time though, as they go into that first turn, it is Ivor Matthews and Simon Wall that have got the lead, they go wide, but very quick around that first bend, down the back straight they go, and Sean Conway Baker has to follow them, that's Rick McCauley that's up in third place, but Ivor Matthews must know how tight it is to get into this final. Still there is uh, play, Sean Conway Baker and Dave Logan holding second. Winning is what it's all about in these last teams. Ivor Matthews and Simon Moore look to consolidate and get maximum points from this one. They come round off the bottom bend, both looking over their shoulder now. Both know how tight it possibly is. Sean Conway Baker in second at the moment. Knows perhaps that this may not be enough in the tough the other riders. CC sidecar class as they go into the last lap now. Ivan Matthews and Simon Walk looking to get the result that they wanted. Rick McCauley having a good ride in third, now starting to push on Conway Baker under pressure. He said during the interval he was enjoying this circuit, he's riding superbly well. And when you first circuit that is as fast as this and rides as well as this, this is the sort of racing you'll get. Ivan Matthews takes the win. Sean Conway Baker comes through for second and Rick McCauley in third. The result of he career win for outfit number 15. That is the outfit of Ivor Matthews and Simon Wall. In second place, number 71, Sean Conway Baker and Dave Hogan. In third place, number 51, that's Rick McCauley and Martin Taylor. In fourth place, number 75, that's Ray Glasscock and Jarno Glasscock. The winning time, 128.25, 128.25. We've got the outfits underway once again and I said about how important it was, how tight it was with the points. John Horsey and Max Samuel both have a chance of getting into the final. Matt Framrover sitting in second place at the moment. John Horsey and Jason Glenny leading as they come round that bottom turn. Well, John Horsey and Jason Glenny are no strangers to tight competition. They'll know exactly what it's all about when you go into the last ride. Knowing that win is what you need, they'll go for it. They're on 12 points coming into this last ride. It could mean, unfortunately, that we're going to see one of our 17-point scorers going out because Dave Steer goes in the last ride if he gets a win, and he will make up the complement of riders, all scoring 18 or 19 points. But Matt Frommola, 11 points at the moment. Five may not be enough in this second place. But John Horsey won't mind that at all. He'll take no prisoners. He will be going strong, holding on to that lead. One more lap to go. But this, however, has been a terrific ride from Matt Frommola and Andy Wilson. It really has put in some good I'm sure that if my memory serves me correctly, it's only about their third meeting they've had on this outfit, so they really are starting to get in tune with it. As they now go towards the checkered flag, and it's going to be a win for John Halsey and Jason Glenny. Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson get second. John Hiscock and Jason Gill take third. 13, John Halsey and Jason Glenny. In second, number five, Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson. In third, 184, John Hiscock and Jason Gill. And in fourth, number 52. 126.56 was the winning time, 126.56. So we get underway, and indeed as they uh, come up past me, I can see all hands in the air and flags in the air, so they're going to be taken back and do it again. Interesting thing with the points is I think that Dave Steer has to get a win to get himself into the final. Now Richard Thomas is way down on the points. 
But he's certainly capable of getting a win, and it's Richard Thomas has got to the front as they go into that first turn. They go into that bottom turn, holding second, but Richard Thomas, remember he missed his first ride, so he's only got seven points from two rides. So the best he can hope for is a place in the B final, but what he can do is make it very interesting for Dave Steer, because Dave Steer is on 12 points at the moment, and five for that puts him in Corey, Gary Jackson and Rob Wilson. So we'd be looking for two out of three on the same points. Now, to save all that complication, if Dave Steer can get the win, that would really make sure of a place in the final for him. If that would put him on 19 points, the same as Nick Carroll and John Rosey. So whilst all that goes on in the background, let's watch what's happening because Richard Thomas looks determined to want to win this one. Dave Steer comes through on the inside though, he's looking for a way through on that bottom turn. So Richard Thomas throws it in hard into the top bend. Dave Steer forced to go a little bit wide now. Might give him a better run down the back straight because Richard Thomas is breaking his walking line. He's still at the back wheel spinning. So he lost a bit of speed going down the back straight. Now Dave Steer will cut back underneath on the bottom corner and indeed he's come up the inside and Dave Steer gets it. Oh, a tremendous ride from Dave Steer and Rob Shorrock. They really did have to work for that. I'm sure they were conscious of the fact that they needed a win in the last ride. Oh, tremendous racing, and indeed, uh, I'm sure Richard Thomas is disappointed that he missed out on that first scoring uh, ride. As a win for outfit number 17, Dave Steer and Rob Sharrox. In second place, number 60, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. In third place, number 30, outfit number 30 is Alan Pearson and Dave Wint, Darren Winch. In fourth place, number 18, Justin Westaway and Mark Courtney. The winning time, 128.97. 128.97, the winning time, 17, 60, 30 and 18. See you later, lads. Turn our attention now to uh, the solo open and they quickly get underway and get into that top turn. Race 39 in the program and John Jeffries is in terrific form again. Lifts the front wheel up as he goes by me. Remember that John Jeffries is defending this title. He won it here last year and would love to win it two years in concession as he goes up the back straight. Rob Vincent still there in second place. Down past me, it is Rob John Jeffries leading from Robinson in second. Number 27, Mark Howard Coles is the rider in third. But well, I think that uh, John Jeffries knows that he's got a place in the final. He may have had that sixth place right from that very first ride this afternoon, but he's certainly made no mistakes since then. Robinson's had some good rides this afternoon, but he's been in second places. It could be enough to get him into the final. And it will indeed be the chequered flag for them as they come round this time. John Jeffries comes off that top turn. Towards the chequered flag. That's his second this afternoon. Of the third leg rise for the solo open and it's a win for rider number four that's john jeffries he's defending the title well in second place number one seven six i should say one seven seven shouldn't i, I thought i didn't recognize that number one seven seven is rob vinson in third place number 27 in fourth one nine four in fifth one two five in sixth one four four because already we've got a race 40 underway and Mitch Gardner's got himself to the front. Now this time we've got Justin Elkins in third place. Now he's got machinery going, obviously problems in his second ride. Phil Ashcroft is in second at the moment though. So uh, Justin Elkins is going to do it. He's got a lot of work to do because Mitch Gardner's really flying at the moment as he comes down past me. Now Justin Elkins is second. Remember he's already had two wins this afternoon, Mitch Gardner. Looks to be in terrific form. Up the back straight he goes. 
very much in control as he goes around that top band. This is a nice big circuit. is in second as they go into the last lap and Justin Elkins again has hit problems. If Justin Elkins pulls out as Mike Dowling goes through. As we see the checkered flag being raised, this time up the bottom of the top end. That's a terrific ride once again from Mitch Gordon. Three rides and three wins for him. Bill Ashcroft in the second place. Mike Dowling comes across the line in third. Rider number 17, that's Mitch Gordon. In second place, number 83, Phil Ashcroft. In third, number 282, that's Mike Dowling. So, 17, 83, 282. Followed by 30 in fourth. 223 in fifth. Sixth place is number 46. Seventh, 142. Eighth, 71. The winning time was 113.57, 113.57, I know that some of you keep your programs 100%, I didn't give you the time for race 39, that was 117.12, 117.12. So we quickly move on, and if anybody missed race 39 result, let's quickly give it to you, it's 4, 177, 27, 194, 125, 144, and 87, 117.12. We now move on to race 41. And I'm sure they've done all the arithmetic. So race 41 and indeed this one being led by Phil Ambrose, Paul Smith in second place. Uh, we've seen the youngster Phil Ambrose going well lately and indeed it's good to see him down here in Devon going so well. And he's a very distinctive style and I'm sure this is one rider that's just going to continue to get better and better and better. He goes into that bottom turn. No pressure from anybody at the moment. Paul Smith still there in second place. Rob Melksham is holding third spot at the moment. Smith, so that's what it looks like being how it's going to be for second and third. As we watch Phil Ambrose come around that top end for the last time in the qualifying heat. The next time we'll see him will be in a final. Phil Smith gets second, Rod Melsham in third. It was a win for rider number 50, that's Phil Ambrose. In second place, number nine, Paul Smith. In third place, number 91, that's Rob Melksham. Fourth place, number 28, Scott Hughes. Fifth place, number 44, Adrian Rowe. Sixth place, number 189, John Snow. Or Rob Snow, I should say. Seventh place, 193, John Shanes. And eighth place, number 185, John Snow. 116.25, 116.25, the winning time as we now move to the last race of the qualifying. Race 42 in your program. One or two more riders that could make their way into the final. John Underwood, one of them, certainly. He's there in second place. Mike Hills is leading as he comes down past me. John Underwood, remember, on a 350 riding in the open. Now, he's already won the 350 this afternoon. He seized his 500 up earlier on today. And he's riding on a 350 in the open. <laughs> well, it looked like a wave to me anyway. <laughs> Mike Hills, I think, must have known what it was when he came by him. There's John Underwood, is now leading from Mike Hills in second place. Run the one to go over John Underwood. Mike Hills still there in second place. Colin Mills holding third at the moment. Dave Barnaby in fourth. But they're a long way back from the leader, John Underwood, as he's already into the last turn. This the last qualifying ride this afternoon. And he goes down towards the checkered flag. That's going to be a win.
final qualifying ride this afternoon to get away into those finals. It is a win for rider number 77, that's John Underwood. In second place, number 178, Mike Hills. In third place, number 183, and that's Colin Mills. In fourth place, number 35, Dave Barnaby. In fourth place, number 49, Dave Heath. In sixth place, number 118, that's uh, Gary Fandre. And uh, seventh place, number 12. The winning time, 116.60, 116.60. looks as if number 51, uh, Rick McCauley, has got himself to the front as he goes round that bottom turn. Remember, this is an outing for the novices only. They've been racing against experts all afternoon. Justin Westaway, number 118 in second spot. Well, one outfit making a shortcut into the middle of the circuit. As indeed, Rick McCauley and Martin Taylor look to be making this one there. Is this uh, an outing for novices on their own? And Rick McCauley's been performing well against the experts this afternoon. So he's certainly going to make this one in. And he goes down the back straight. Going well at the moment. Rick McCauley and Martin Taylor as they come into the last lap flag. Up past me, number 118, Justin Westaway. Wayne Westaway, I should say. He's in second spot. this the first of our finals this afternoon the novice sidecar final race 43 in your program a win for outfit number 51 rick mccauley the novice sidecar final it is a win for outfit number 51 Rick McCauley and Martin Taylor in second number 118 Wayne Westaway in third number 44 that's uh, the outfit of Jim Breen and Alf Breen in fourth place number 40 Graham Curtin and Alan Delve the winning time was 130.94 130.94 so you probably noticed that we've got two outfits on the line. These two outfits are in a runoff to get a place in the final. Gary Jackson and Rob Wilson. Now Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh looking for that last place in the final. Lee and Rob Wilson as they go around that top turn. And as they come down the back straight, you can see the two of them together. As Rob Wilson is coming up behind Gary Jackson at the moment. But Rob puts it almost sideways in that bottom turn. And as they go into that top turn, Gary Jackson looks very determined to get himself a place in the final as he goes down the back straight. We've got five qualifiers already. We're looking for just one more place to be filled. It's one of these two outfits. The second one obviously will go in the B final. But not what either of these two want to do. Gary Jackson, very determined, wants to get into that A final. Down the back straight, very, very hard for Gary Jackson trying to get it the quickest possible way to get round that bend. Into the last lap he goes. Rob Wilson losing pace on Gary Jackson as he goes into that last bend. Rob and Tony Miles are going to have to be content with the B final as they go down the back straight. It is Gary Jackson that is going to make it into the big A final. He joins a very, very formidable lineup.
first time this afternoon that these guys have all been out together. Earlier on during the qualifying heats of the Open, they've all been competing with the top experts. So who will come out on top of this challenge of the novices as they come round? First time we'll pick up for you, it is at the moment, it is number 27, Mark Howard Coles, and he's been putting in some good results this afternoon, trying to chase after some of these very quick experts, and he deserves to be out in front. So, Mark Howard Coles, on the gower, comes round off that top end. In second, chasing after him is... Number 28, that's Scott Hughes. Uh, Scott had scored well in two of his rides. He had a fall in his second ride, but going well in second place at the moment. And as they go up the back straight, it is still Mark Howard Jones leading. It will be the last lap for him this time as he comes round. This is a good ride from Mark. You can't see him being a novice with too long. Mark Howard Jones. Dave Heath, the rider in third, who's looking to try and get second from Scott Hughes. But that's how they stay at the moment. As they go up to the last turn for the last time, it's going to be checkered flag for them this time as they come down past me. They come towards that checkered flag, it is. Mark Howard Coles takes the win. Scott Hughes takes second. Dave Heath in third. And John Weeks in fourth. A novice solo final, the highest 12 novice scorers this afternoon, sponsored by Hookins Lubrications, a win for rider number 27, that's Mark Howard Coles. In second place, number 28, Scott Hughes. In third place, number 49, Dave Heath. In fourth place, number 46, John Weeks. In fifth place, number 44, Adrian Rowe. In sixth place, number 118, that's Gary Fandray. And in 7th place, number 125, Mark Vacker. And 8th place, number 189, Rob Snow. 124.81 was the winning time, 124.81. So now, chance to sit back and enjoy it, hopefully. So we've got the 500 sidecars. again but obviously uh, the paramedics in attendance 57 Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe 11 Ricky Neal and uh, passenger Kevin Jones 418 is Chris Salisbury Gary Hughes number two Steve Kensington Andy Robertson number 143 Keith Richards and Thomas Baines and unfortunately it would have been Sean Chick and Guy Mitchell pleased to see both of them up and back in the pits I just said I saw them walk back in the pits, but as I've just been corrected, they're down on the start line. So obviously the outfit not bent too much, and neither Sean nor Guy suffering any uh, problems. So away they go, and Keith Richards has made the best of the starts. Mike Reed is on the inside with those. They go into that first turn, and those two together as they go in the first turn. Mike Reed just gets the comes out leading from Keith Richards in second place. Chris Salisbury's gone for a tight line on the inside of Keith Richards. And that's how they go into that bottom bend. 
Well, it's all getting very tight in that second and third, and while they're all battling, you can see that in a way goes my green and Mark Ford. They really have been riding superbly this afternoon, and there's a real battle going on for second place because Chris Salisbury has now come through in the second. Chris Salisbury and Gary Hughes have got round Keith Richards and now Keith Richards is under pressure from Steve Kensington. Steve Kensington starts to move up on the inside. Goes through into third place. And Mike Reed is now in front. The one is. Into the bottom corner he goes. Oh, great to see uh, Sean Chick and Guy Mitchell out there riding in fifth place. They're obviously both okay. And indeed, a terrific ride from Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe. give you the re overall official result of the 500cc sidecar final that was a win for outfit number 57 Mike Reed and Mark Thorpe in second place number 418 that's Chris Salisbury and Gary Hughes in third place number two Steve Kensington and Andy Robertson in fourth place number 143 Keith Richards and passenger Thomas Baines in fifth place number six Sean Chick and Guy Mitchell in sixth place, number 11, Ricky Neal and Kevin Jones. The winning time, 121.22. 121.22. If they will be brought under starter's orders. Nobody else appearing from the pit, so we go with what we've got on the start line. This the solo B final as they go up the back straight for the first time. Pick them out for you as they come round, and indeed you may notice that some of these riders have already been out in at the non final. Indeed, what a great ride this would be for number 27, Mark Howard Coles. He's won the novice final this afternoon. He could well have his name on the B final as well as he goes round that bottom corner, head down up the back straight, got himself the lead. He leads it around his top bend and the second time. Down past me. Mike Bowden has had an awful lot of rides this afternoon. He's been riding in the pre 75. He's been riding in the open, and now he gets to go in the B final. And he's indeed got himself to the front as he goes around that bottom bend. Up the back straight he goes, leading from the early leader, Mark Howard Cole. After all his efforts this afternoon, he's now got himself at the head of the B final. Number 49, Dave Heath, who's also been out in the novice final. He finished third in that. And he's got himself a ride in this B final. Now there could be a late challenge for Mark Howard Coles. Well, Mark Howard Coles looks to go around the outside of my Burns. It's going to be close to the finish. And you can see the checkered flag is ready. He's trying on the inside. And Mark comes through on the inside. Mark Howard Coles gets it. So he's done the double this afternoon. He's got the novice solo and indeed the B open solo. Terrific riding from the youngster Mark Howard Coles. Well, indeed, I'm sure the riders are going to come round. It was a terrific ride from Mark as he comes around for his show of appreciation because he's won the novice final, he's now won the B final. Well, this certainly is going to be a great record day for him. So, the B finalists disappear back into the pits. Let's give you the official result. It was a win for rider number 27. That, of course, is Mark Howard Coles. In second place, number 223, Mike Bowden. In third place, number 49, that's Dave Heath. In fourth place, number 46, John Weeks. Fifth place, number 142. In sixth place, number 125. And the winning time, 125.88. 125.88 B final. This is the Devonshire Dumpling B final for sidecars. 
sponsored by Torbay Motorcycles of Newton Abbott. And, well, whilst we've looked at the V final, really, when you look at the riders that are going in it, there's many a club, I'm sure, will be proud to have this in their A final. 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. Five is the outfit I've probably been most impressed with this afternoon. They've uh, got themselves a new bike. They look to be getting things together now. Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson. Number 71, Sean Conway Baker, who's uh, had his problems this afternoon, and passenger Dave Hogan. Number 50, it's Ian McCauley and James Wallacott. And I think, I think we'll find it's Tony Bemister on there. Number 51, Rick McCauley and Martin Taylor. And let's not forget that Rick McCauley has won the novice final. So uh, he's done the same as we've seen Mark Howard Coles do in the solos. He's got himself in both finals. And the last qualifier, number 30, Alan Pierce and Dave Wimps. in August and then of course we shouldn't forget that once we start dropping into September we've got the par 90 on the 5th and then we've got the British Masters on the 12th. So away we go then with the sidecar B final and straight away to the front goes Rob Wilson who just unfortunately missed out on 25 of the A final. He goes around that top end and down the back straight. That front roller is up in second place to him. Ian McCauley and Tony Bemister in third at the moment. Being pursued hard though, as they come up past me for the second time, it is Rob Wilson and Tony Miles that lead. And as the rest of the outfits keep going, we've got that going on off the circuit. But Rob Wilson and Tony Miles missed out on that A final. They're determined to make this one theirs. But it's going to be a victory for Rob Wilson if he completes this last lap in the same way that he's been completing the other three. Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson still there in second. And Rick McCauley, in fact, it is, has gone up into third place. Sean Conway Baker still there in fourth. And the Czech flag is made ready. It's going to be a win for Rob Wilson and Tony Moles. Disappointed that they weren't in the A final, but. That's certainly given the bike a good run out this afternoon. That was the sidecar open B final. Let's give you the result of that as it went across the line. It was a win for number 24. That, of course, is Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In second place, number five, Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson. In third place, number 51, that's the outfit of Rick McCauley and passenger this afternoon, Martin Taylor. In fourth place, number 71, is Sean Conway Baker and passenger Dave Hogan. The winning time, 129.38, 129.38. So it's 24, 5, 51, 71 and 129.38. I think judging by that uh, ripple of applause I heard, I can see that Tony Bemister is actually up on his feet again, and uh, Ian perfectly okay as well. This one, the big one, this is what the qualifying was all about. This is the one that they've really got to pull the performances out of the bag. And I always just feel like I should ask whether anybody is uh, feeling that they can predict who's going to do it. Well, it's a very tough call.
massive lineup for the Devonshire Dumpling 1999 as the tapes go quite evenly and Mitch Godden has made a very good start in the middle. Phil Ashcroft is there with him though as the two of them go into that first turn. It is Phil Ashcroft on the inside. Gordon has now got the work to do as he piles into that bottom corner. Phil Ambrose on the inside and the two of them go after Phil Ashcroft. And Phil Ashcroft looks down at his machinery. Phil Ashcroft has got problems. John Jeffries goes past him as well as the rest of the two. Closing on those front two as they go up the back straight, but it is Mitch Garden that's got the bit between his teeth now as he goes into that top corner. But he gets himself under control and gets back in line and Mitch Garden is putting the power down. It'll be the checkered flag for him this time as he comes round. This is what he's waited all day for. That was a tremendous race. Great shame that Phil Ashcroft got problems after that early lead, but Mitch Gordon won't mind that at all. He's uh, done it the hard way. He wasn't leading from start to finish, but he's come through and then done three very impressive quick laps. Tremendous ride as you saw it there this afternoon. Terrific win for rider number 17. That's Mitch Gordon. He takes the win. In second place, number 50 is Phil Ambrose. In third place, number four, that's John Jeffries. In fourth place, number 77, John Underwood. Fifth place, number 178, that's Mike Hills. Sixth place, number 177, Rob Vincent. 7th place is 30, Chris Dix. 8th place is 91, that's Rod Melsham. And 9th place is 183, Colin Mills. 114.59 is the winning time, 114.59. So let's hope you didn't miss any of those as we now move on to the Sidecar Open Final. This is the Devonshire Dumplin' Sidecar Open A. So as we move now to the sidecar final, sponsored by Bike Tech Exeter. One quick notice for all of you is if you are the keen sort of supporter that likes to help, then please do not attempt to take the stakes down. They will be using this track again. And if I remember rightly, on the back of the programme, in two weeks' time, of course. With picking up some of the old trenches is that they'll be full of loose soil, which means when they drop the clutch, the back wheel will just sit there and spin. They have to wait for it to bite, and then away they go. But by that time, all the other outfits have left them. And I'm sure many of you have watched curiously how Speedway riders trying to dig the track up and get rid of all the loose and everything. Well, there is method in the madness because if they can get traction straight away it does give them that little bit of advantage so away we go then this is the big final as they've got underway there's all sorts of problems on that star line gary jackson looks for carl Pugh. he's lost him which means he's lost control he's not in Sharrocks go after them. John Halsey and Jason Glennie are in third at the moment. Mike Terrell and Andy Simons battling it out for fourth place. But at the moment, the pace is being set. By the leader, Ivor Matthews and Simon Hall as they go through the dust on the far side. Dave Steer and Rob Sharrocks are battling it in second, but John Halsey's closing right up on Dave Steer. John Halsey closing right up on Dave Steer. As I can see, well, for some unexplainable reason, 
It's all been brought to a halt. Those of you that go to Grass Track an awful lot will know that basically I'm only the messenger. They are trying to sort out exactly what happened at the moment. As soon as I know what went on, what happened or whatever, I will let you know. You can see that we have got a lot of our crews over there in the pit box. They're all saying that they don't want to go out and rerun. They don't know why it was stopped. So as soon as we can find out, I'll obviously let you know quite how they're going to decide who's won and who hasn't. It's an interesting one. Well, I do hope that they're keeping the beer tent open for me because having been filled up with dust this afternoon, I'm definitely going to need one and whoever's first in the bar tonight can make sure they order an extra pint of...